I'm Nina Curley of WAMDA, and we're live in the WAMDA studio with Pamir Galenbe, a partner at Hummingbird Ventures, which is a Belgian-based venture capital firm. Pamir, how are you? I'm great, thanks. How are you? Good. Are you enjoying Arabnet? Very much so. It's been a good opportunity to meet a lot of new people and um, also see familiar faces. So, uh, no, really great. Were you here last year? I was. I was. And I'm noticing a lot of change. I feel like the industry has matured a lot in the space of 12 months already. So, it was very, very positive to see that. Yeah. A lot. And it's always fun to be in Beirut, by the way, as a side <laughs> yeah, note. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Um, so, you've invested, Hummingbird has invested thus far in four companies in the broader region. Shashek Sabati, Digitouch in Turkey, and then Peak Games, which has now expanded into the Arab world, and also Marka VIP. Um, as an investor, how do you see the differences in the two markets in terms of challenges that the companies are facing? So it depends on the, um, the industry you look at. In, in gaming, the challenges are similar because in gaming, you're not dealing with um, logistics as you do in e-commerce. So um, in gaming, there's a challenge with payments and payments tend to be a lot more complicated in MENA than they are in Turkey. Uh, but it's a challenge you can overcome. And with Peak Games, we're already seeing that uh, a large percentage of our revenue, over 30%, is now coming from MENA. Uh, so we're very, uh, very positive about that. Uh, in e-commerce, on the other hand, Turkey is a very different market. Uh, logistics tend to work flawlessly in Turkey. You, know, you can deliver anything uh, very cheaply anywhere, whether it's in Istanbul or whether it's um, somewhere on the border with Iran. Um, and it'll be uh, more or less the same price and more or less the same amount of time. I mean, I'm exaggerating slightly, wow, but that's, yeah. that's the point. Um, also, Turkey has a great penetration of credit cards and debit cards. Um, in fact, you know, one of the negative things is that uh, uh, consumer debt, especially credit card debt, is a big issue in Turkey. Um, so you, re you read that in newspapers, you know, people um, you know, having problems with their debt, basically. They love to spend. They love to spend and they love to spend on their cards. So um, uh, Turkey is not a COD market like the Middle East and, and that makes e-commerce a lot easier. Uh, in MENA, we're dealing with two challenges. One is logistics being a lot more difficult and secondly, COD, uh, which compounds the problem. Because effectively, when you're shipping a product, you're assuming that you're going to get paid for it. And sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Is that a big problem? I mean, what percentage uh, of times are you seeing people are not paying for it? So, um, it, it, unfortunately, it's still a pretty, a pretty significant percentage. In some markets, it's double digit. So, um, so you have to factor this into your business model and you have to try and make it work one way or another. So, um, you know, there are various strategies, but, um, you know, what we're finding is that uh, you have to be really clever about the way you deal with returns or products that are undelivered in the first place. And you also have to find ways to increase that delivery rate. I see. And uh, how do you see the continued expansion of Hummingbird's investments in the Arab world and the influx of Turkish companies and Turkish investment in the Arab world? So I'm not, I'm not sure, I'm not convinced we're going to see an influx of Turkish companies in the Arab world. Um, in fact, I don't think we've seen that yet. Uh, my, you know, my, my feeling is that most Turkish internet entrepreneurs are very um, focused on their domestic market because they still experience a lot of growth. Uh, it's also very competitive locally, so if you take your eyes off the ball, you know you might uh, you might suffer from that. So I think it's more the exception than the rule at, the, at this stage, I would say. Um, so I think the the opportunity is is very much in Mina, dominated by local entrepreneurs here who are who are seizing the opportunity for themselves. Um, there are a few exceptions. I think we'll see maybe a couple of e-commerce companies from Turkey um, coming over here, but I don't see that as a, as a major trend right now. And it's certainly not for the foreseeable future. Um, you know, in the case of Marka VIP, um, I guess we had a, a, a Turkish DNA to the extent that I'm, you know, I guess I, I, I'm, I'm Turkish, and um, uh, we had some Turkish investors as well, some friends of mine who were angel investors from day one. Uh, and we also do a lot of sourcing from Turkey. So we have about 20 people in our office in Istanbul now sourcing Turkish products. But um, that's the extent to which you know. We have Turkish DNA. So you see this as more of an isolated example than a broad trend? Yeah, and I wouldn't say, I mean, I, other than that, Marka VIP is really a local company. It's a Jordanian company at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, so I really don't see many Turkish entrepreneurs coming over here. As for investors, you know, there aren't that many investors in Turkey in the first place either, you know, that invest in internet companies. So uh, I don't see that as a major trend either. 
at the moment. I see, but even as Turkish uh, startups and, and companies scale and get to the point where they're looking to go global, do you think they'll look more towards Europe as opposed to the Arab world? Or um, Look, there are very few European companies who go global. Um, you know, the only companies that really do go global in the digital media space are American companies, and they're the ones that have business models that do allow them to go global, uh, like Facebook and so on, Twitter. Um, in e-commerce, it's very hard to go global. That might change, you know, with um, you know logistics changing, and you see more and more companies shipping worldwide and, and having customers worldwide. So, who knows? In the next two to two to five years, we might see changes there, but. Right now, if you look at e-commerce across the world, it tends to be a very local business, which is why you know you know you, you got people like Rocket who make a business out of taking successful e-commerce models and then using their execution talents to replicate those in as many markets as possible. Right. Yeah. So you think it's a bit early to say that there's increasing cohesion between the Turkish market and the Arab world? Very much so. Yeah. I think the two markets are very different, and I think um, and I think that's why there's a great opportunity for our entrepreneurs. I think their market is wide open. Right. Lots of space there. Yeah. Well, um, coming from the perspective of Hummingbird, what other companies in general are you looking to invest in in either market? So, um, look, we're very excited about MENA, and I, I mean MENA X Turkey. We're, we love Turkey as well, but Turkey has become a little bit frothy lately. You frothy know, meaning? Meaning that the valuations are starting to creep to unreasonable levels, we feel. Um, I mean, I'm half joking, but, uh, you know, Turkey has become the flavor of the day now. It wasn't, you know, two years ago when we started investing there. It is now, so um, so we find it more difficult to find attractive deals from a valuation standpoint. Um, whereas in Mina, uh, we're still finding very attractive opportunities, and uh, so we're actually maybe more, even more excited now about about Mina than we are about Turkey at this point. But obviously, we love Turkey, and we see over the next ten to twenty years a lot of opportunities. I'm sure. Do you see it particularly as a tech bubble in Turkey or across the board? I'm, I'm probably not the right person to comment across the board because I, I live in the tech bubble myself, so uh, so I don't really know what's going on beyond uh, beyond tech, uh, other than anecdotal conversations with friends. But uh, I think obviously across the board, the economy has been very strong for the last few years, and and Turkey came out of the recession um, doing very good. So um, yeah. So it's a bit more of a tech bubble, yeah. but you're not seeing as much of a tech bubble in the Arab world yet in terms of startup. Not yet. I think I think it's uh, I think the. Uh, the that's also what I mean by the difference between ArabNet this year and last year. I, I feel that there's there's more energy maybe this year. More, uh, I mean, there was a lot of energy last year, but I, I, I don't know. My feeling is that people are taking this whole thing more seriously this year. Absolutely. This space that we're in. So, what's next for you in general? So we're looking at new investments. Um, uh, you know, in uh, in Mina particularly. Hope you know we're we're talking to a few people. We might might you know if some of those come through, we might announce a few things in the next few months or weeks. And um, uh, still working very hard with our portfolio companies. You know, personally, I'm spending a lot of time with Mark VIP. Um, so um, uh, you know, okay. that's that's also. Um, I mean, Mark VIP still has a lot of challenges, right? So logistics we haven't solved yet, um, and that's the primary challenge. So we know that, and um, and we're very focused on trying to make it work. Yeah, as a pioneer in the market, you're yeah. sort of at the forefront of, yeah. of those challenges. Yeah. yeah, and it's both an opportunity and a curse, as you know. So. Of course. Yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing what you're investing in next. Keep us posted. Thank you. We'll do. Thanks for chatting with us, Premier. Thanks a lot, Naina. Thanks. Thank you.